All right, construction cronies, welcome to another metal stud framing video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a little tiny room here with lots and lots of tricks. Stay to the end of the video, man, because I got even more tips to show you guys about metal stud framing. This room is unique in the sense that it has two different elevations for the ceiling height here, okay? This is a metal stud house that we've done in Calgary, and uh, yeah, let's jump right into it. So when you got your layout done, you guys have the drawings, um, you do your layout. This is how we cut our steel. Okay, so this right here is showing you 21 and 5 eighths or whatever, 21 half. We always cut our tr bottom track and top track back three quarters of an inch for drywall to come to pass through on, on adjoining walls. Right there, we got our little stub piece for the corner. Okay, we cut that as tight as we can. So 10 inches or whatever, 10 and an eighth or whatever, we cut it at 10 inches. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to do your corners here in a second. But you can see now this is the wall that is going to be adjoining in. So we take three quarters of an inch off the, the bottom track. And you'll see why here in a second. Placing the track right there. Always give three quarters of an inch for three eighths or sorry, five eighths or half inch drywall. I always go three quarters of an inch. Now, when you're cutting back your corners here, because you're always overlapping your tracks. Okay. Go back four and a quarter for three and five eighths. Okay. That gives you a nice uh, three quarters of an inch uh, for your drywall to go in. Okay, so uh, it's uh, very important. This is uh, how I cut my corners, right? We're just going to mark it there. And uh, I cut my tabs off. Uh, when you're cutting like this with the red cutters, you know, you just cut and peel off, like, you know, roll it off type thing. You, you get the feel of your cutters as you go, your whisk snips or whatnot. But you see how I've overlapped the track on the bottom there? Boom, yeah, and that is where the drywall will go in, but also you can see the stub is also the swing of the door. The door will um, normally swing in those ways, but in this situation, it's a pocket door. You'll see. Here, uh, we have, because we have the wood floor, I'm just using uh, wafers, the fine thread wafers, and it is super strong. I'm going like every 10 inches, two, uh, and every 10 inches on both sides of the track, and I love overlapping all my corners as much as I can. Okay, it gives the, the whole build a lot more strength. Now I'm going to be laying out my studs. These are two foot centers. I know it's 5 eighths drywall on that exterior wall. So I'm going to come in 24 5 eighths. If it's 16 inch centers, go in 16 5 eighths from that wall, right? Because you're going to have your 5 eighths drywall first, tie in your floater, and then you're going to put your pieces in on those light gauge walls. You get your top track in using lasers. I use line lasers. I use pin lasers. I always have two pin lasers and one line laser on me at all times. And this, this is the same thing on the top track, right? I'm always cutting it to overlap. And in this situation, I've lasered in that first piece. And so I know that that corner is perfect. So all I got to do is line the steel up uh, to that corner and it's good. And I'm also cutting it back three quarters of an inch at the top. So the drywall will freely pass through the, uh, the back side there. Okay. Pay attention to the, like pay attention to some of the details here, guys. Like I'm not going to be explaining absolutely everything, but what I have here is I have a pin laser on the back side. I already know where the front corner is because I've lasered in that uh, uh, first piece that I've put in. So I don't need to uh, put two lasers on, right? I can just use the track that's already in. And that's a, that's a key thing guys for a lot of, a um, lot of walls you build. Uh, you 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 set in one side and, and you can use that as like a marker, okay, for your for your uh, for your level for your your plumb marks, your level marks, whatever. Uh, that's just a good practice. On six inch track here, I'm putting two screws in. I always screw in every single floor joist, okay? Uh, like I fat, like screw into every floor joist. Uh, on six inch track, you put two screws, three and five eighths. You can get away with just one, uh, but you can see also too the clips that I'm using because the wall is running uh, along the same uh, path of the joist. It's like in between the floor joists. So you just use clips. You can use flat stock. You can use, use even stud. I have lots of videos on that sort of stuff, okay? Uh, but yeah, like just make sure everything is, is, is secure. Use clips wherever. I always put a clip where the corner lands, and then every two feet, uh, I add another clip, okay, for the top track. You can see that flat stock? That's the clip. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so I don't have your drawings, but you guys are going to be responsible for your layout. It's super simple. Just copy the drawings. And if you need to learn more about that, then I'll teach you. I have lots of videos on that as well. Just leave me a comment and I'll link you a video. 
Uh, because the uh, ceiling elevation is different heights there, I'm using two pin lasers to plumb up either side of the door. Normally, I would just plumb up one side of the door and then use my tape measure to measure across. Here, I'm marking my centers on uh, two foot centers. And because it's coming off that wall, I'm coming out an extra five eighths to, um, uh, to allow for that drywall to pass through. A header is simple, right? You shoot in your elevations. You put two studs on either side of the door. You always go off your high side. So mark your door elevation on both sides of the studs and then go off the higher side okay it's simple as that always put two studs on either side of the door even if you can i would always go like 20 gauge if you're a 25 gauge wall go 20 20 gauge on your door studs it's perfectly awesome but always leave room for drywall to pass through you don't want to be blocked by that bottom track okay it's important to secure like the the drywall and the floaters it's like a big thing okay because that's a big part of securing your walls so just be a, there's another example right there of different elevations for the ceiling. Okay. You just keep it running straight. You always lay out everything on the ground and follow it on the top. You just track and track and track. Okay. It's pretty straightforward. Here's another example of the floater, the corner. Okay. Two door studs. These are uh, that one in the bathroom is big because it's a pocket door, but this is a regular door and um, the swing wherever the swing usually goes inside to the wall. That's where your short stub will be. This corner here, we're gonna be burying a column. When you're doing your layout, you gotta think of these things. But I, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, be sure to leave me a comment down below. And this is Chris, this is another Metal Stud Framing video, guys. Hashtag cronies. Bye for now, everyone.